Hello there, and welcome to In My Opinion 4, Star Wars Bounty Hunter. In this Star Wars adventure, you're Jango Fat, a well-known bounty hunter who gets the job done. Oh, and of course, he's also the father, Bobo Fat. After one of Jango's many jobs, he finds out about a bounty that Count Dooku has broadcast to certain bounty hunters. The job is simple, take out a problematic Sith and get a great deal of money. Of course, Dooku has a secret motive for offering this job, which has to do with the future clone army. Jango heads out to find clues where this Sith is hiding, though along the way he will come across some trouble. As a big fan of the Fets, it was nice to see what Jango was up to before Episode 2 kicked off, showing us how he got his iconic ship and how Boba came to be. I also like we get to see more of his personality, and while he's still a villain and has no problem threatening and killing people, we also get to see he can care for those who are extremely close to him. Running into Zam and seeing how her and Jango became a team before her quick death in episode 2 was pretty interesting as well. While Disney Star Wars was dumb and wiped this game away from canon, it's still an enjoyable Jango adventure. This Star Wars entry is an action adventure game with some platforming. While you're hunting down your next bounty or informant, you'll be blasting and flipping through mobs of enemies anywhere from the scum of the galaxy to security. As you go along each level, you start to unlock more gear like your jetpack, rockets, and grenades. Some of your gear has a finite amount of ammo, but there are a good amount of ammo pickups for them and health pickups as well that are either lying around or enemy drops. Another pickup you can find is a Mandalorian Rage Emblem, which can for a short time make you invincible and do more damage, though these are not common. There is a machine gun and sniper rifle you will run into as well, but those are more rare than your main equipment, and you'll most likely be sticking to your other gear and of course your dual pistols, which has an infinite amount of ammo. Being a bounty hunter, of course you can collect bounties while going through the levels. All you need to do is scan the right person, then tie them up with your whipcord gadget, which can be used as much as you want. The core gunplay is fun, as the game really lets you feel like a badass while you take out your enemies. I like that the dual pistols shoot as fast as you push the button, making you feel like you're pulling the trigger. The lock-on also works pretty well as both pistols will hit whatever you're locked onto no matter what movement you're doing. Not only that, if there are multiple enemies, one pistol will shoot whoever you're locked onto while the other shoots someone else and it never feels finicky. The other gear is also pretty useful at saving your skin as while the game starts off pretty easy, it does get a little more harder later on. So weapons like your flamethrower can clear out a bunch of enemies if they start to crowd you and your rocket is perfect for taking out more powerful or just groups of enemies from afar. All of this does make for a hectic and fun time, though not everything is perfect. Movement itself feels a bit weird since in most third person games the camera tends to move with you as you use the left stick, but slowly, while the right stick gives you more camera control. Here the camera is way too loose when you move around with the left stick, and it takes a little bit to get used to that. There are other camera problems as when things get crazy and you're in a tight spot, it can spaz out. Also, while the platforming itself is fine with the jetpack being easy to control, the fuel being rechargeable, being able to shoot while it's on making for a cool visual, and there even being power-ups that give you temporary unlimited fuel, the camera can easily make it all go to shit. There was a certain section where I kept dying because I kept fighting with the fucking thing which almost took all my lives. Yes, you do have a certain amount of lives to complete the levels, and it's not that big of a deal at first since the beginning stuff can be rather quick and easy. But as you get further into the game, some spots start to get longer and tougher, and if you lose all your lives, you have to start the whole level over, and those checkpoints you got earlier won't matter. This can easily start pissing you off as some deaths are more the camera's fault than yours. Also, there are some levels that are a bit too big and confusing. Thankfully, I ran to only like two that made me feel kind of lost. There are some boss fights as well and each were pretty fun, taking out things like giant robots and fellow bounty hunters. There was only one that did act kind of funny as it did not want to blow up no matter how many times I shot at it, and then it just gave up eventually and blew up randomly. As I mentioned, there is some side bounty hunting you can do while playing through the game, and while it's a cool feature and lets you feel like more of the bounty hunter you're supposed to be, it has some issues. Such as in order to get your bounty alive, you must first stand still in first person scan mode and randomly scan and hope you find someone. Then after scanning them, you must tie them up with your whipcord and press the confirm button. This makes you an open target, and while it's not a problem at first, it becomes super frustrating later on with the increasing amount of enemies you face, and you'll either die or get to near death. They really should have had an easier way to let the player know there was a bounty around, and maybe let you shoot the wire from afar. And no, having Ross say, Jango, there's a bounty in this level doesn't count as it's about as useful as her saying, Jango, there's enemies in this level. I eventually ended up just skipping bounties altogether as they were not worth the headache. There are some unlockables in the game as you go through its 18 levels, such as artwork which is unlocked by getting money from collecting bounties. 
Then there are feather symbols you can also find with some being pretty well hidden, which unlocks cards from the Star Wars card game to look at. The last two things you unlock just by playing and completing the game are bloopers they made just for the game, and a pretty interesting comic taking place during the Mandalorian Wars. These last two things are definitely the most entertaining things to unlock, and I thank god it's easy to unlock them. You can check with the level select to see what you're missing in each level if you want to head back and try again. Well, this is a PS2 game upgrades to the PS4, and while it does show its age, it's not awful looking. The models themselves don't look that bad, with some looking a little better than others. Django well looks like Django, down to his cool armor to his face, and even the actor from the movie voices him. The voice acting itself is pretty dang good, even the Count Dooku voice impersonator does a really good job. The only voice I had a problem with was Zam, as she can be pretty flat. All the Star Wars sounds you know and love are here, like the blast of fire, Wilhelm scream, and so on. The level designs are nice and varied, as you will be planet hopping, so you'll see things like canyons, jungles, and a certain desert planet. The game ran fine, at least for the most part, since when shit hits the fan and you're fighting a bunch of enemies at once and shooting all your gadgets, it starts to slow down a little bit. I've heard of you, you know. I'm Zam Wazel. You must be new to the business. Why? Because you haven't heard of me? No, because you're reckless. You could learn a thing or two about being subtle. You call that subtle? You just brought down a Republic prison. My plan didn't include you, or the chaos you started back there. You cost me my ship. I remember playing the hell out of this game when I was younger on the GameCube and loving every minute of it. Now after replaying it, I will say I still enjoyed myself, but the game maybe isn't as perfect as I remembered it. I have fun feeling like a badass bounty hunter, flipping, flying, shooting, using all the gadgets. And killing people felt really gratifying, especially with their screams and dramatic falls. It's just the camera made some parts a pain in the balls, which led into cheap deaths and with the continuous system the game has, leads to suffering. I also wish the bounty gameplay mechanics were done much better. I beat the game in 5.5 and hours and replayability comes in the form of going after all the collectibles. Like I said, I still had a really good time with the game and if you're a fan of the Fets or the recent Mandalorian show, this game is not a bad option to live out your bounty hunter fantasy. So gear up and get ready to collect. I hope you enjoy my thoughts on this game and for gamers sake, keep gaming.